Hi, Jonas and Pierre, the Beer and TV Ramble, looking at St. Ives. High gravity. Don't let the dog bite get you. Um, 8.2% ABV by volume. Uh, this was the Big Brother, or the second coming of the original St. Ives premium malt liquor, which was came out in 1987 by McKenzie River Corporation. Of course, that was, which also did, um, I think it's a little too high right here, which also did, um, which also did, um, also Steel Reserve, which was the first um, high gravity malt liquor that came on the scene in 1980, uh, in 2000, excuse me. Of course, McKenzie was bought out by um, by Miller, and at one point, St. Ives was part of that. But then they sold McKenzie sold that share of St. Ives to Paps, um, and then Paps came out with their high gravity also around 2000 at that time. So um, again, this is 8.2% uh, by volume. You can say that this beer uh, is not as popular of all the high gravity lagers that are out there right now. Um, um, doesn't get a good score in Beer Advocate or the Bros. Um, this was one of their, uh, it's not one of their, or it's not one of the more, it's not one of the popular malt liquors that are out there right now. Um, um, you know, I'd say Hurricane, which came out, which is in competition of Steel Reserve, um, and OE High Gravity was another one that came out. Steel Reserve really kind of changed the game in terms of high gravity beers, high gravity malts, malt, or extra strong beers. Um, the, um... St. Ives does a lot of fruit flavor beers, but mostly the, the the premium malt, which is between six six point two percent and then a seven point three percent that came out, are probably more popular uh, within the uh, those who who who, who sample it. Um, sorry, forgive me right here, folks. I'm just kind of taking care of some things here on this warm day here in the Northeast. Uh, excuse me, back home. I'm back in Mobile. I should take that back. Um, this is very, this is, no, this is not bad of all the malts that are out there. Um, this is pretty decent. Um. You know, everyone wants to dismiss this as being trash, but um, it's not bad. This is pretty, pretty refreshing. Very refreshing. Um, Again, like I said, um, if, if you want to say there's a, a nice little bite to it, um, nice little ease to this malt, nothing that's too overly power powering, I think it's good. I think the one I really had uh, trouble going, go guzzling down was the uh, <clears throat> VSL. <clears throat> The VSL um, um, uh, by by Schlitz, the Gold Bull, and I really had a trouble guzzling. I thought it was a little too sweet. This one is pretty okay. Um, uh, again, um, but this would be viewed maybe as a Hellas Doppelbach. Again, my good friend Ronald J. Terrio, Terrio and, um, and and Maria Devon, the girl next door. Around Ronald J. Terry does Louisiana beer reviews. Um, they did a discussion, I believe, was New Year's Eve, um, discussing you know these styles of beer, and uh, he was sampling Hurricane, the the eight point one percent version, not the six percent. 
um, which we don't get the 6% here, we get the 8%. Um, they were sampling and he really uh, kind of liked that brew. It was very, you know, um, the hell is Doppelbach, very refreshing. Again, maybe harsh to some, but two of these is something that you could probably eat, not, not guzzle, not when these beers are going to guzzle back, you know, a lot and just say, hey, I'm cool, I'm mellow, you know, ain't going to get up and go, you know, hop in the car and go run to the store and, you know, buy cigarettes or get some milk for the house, um, whatever. It's not that type of beer to have. Beer that you're going to sit and enjoy and sip and sip, relax and calm and, you know, like a glass, like a fine glass of wine. Yes, I'm comparing this to a fine glass of wine, you know, you, because of the high alcohol volume in this. Um, with this, it, it's, you could send some fruit skins in it, maybe some apples or whatnot. You could send a little grapes. Uh, very, the, the sugar, you can really scent the sugar very well. But again, sipping on this, it's not too, not too overly strong. So, um, pairing this with um, barbecue, uh, ribs, and again, the cost, I bought this in New Jersey, um, and uh, it was like a dollar seventeen. Oh, I bought this, I'm trying to think I bought this, I bought this, I believe, in downtown, I bought this in Newark, I believe, or it might have been, <sighs> might have been in Bloomfield, New Jersey. I purchased this. Yeah, purchased in Newark. I forgot. Now I probably remember. I purchased at Home Liquors in Newark, and they had a lot of selection, a lot of beers that I have. Uh, some I have tried, some I have not tried yet. You know, Genesee Cream Ale that will be down the road. I got Milwaukee's Best Ice. I picked that up. I had this, and. Um, and quite a few others. I wish I had done some more. I wish I, you know, probably next time I do go home back to Jersey, I'm probably going to drive my car, get a good, decent rental car and drive. And I'm going to pack my car with a lot of shit, <laughs> a lot of beer. <clears throat> Swan, some liquor. Hey, he's bootlegging. You know, hey, this guy, poor guy, poor guy. He's not bootlegging anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyhow, um, as I said before, people get a negative view when they talk about, you know, high gravity beers, malt liquors, you know, this. And it says that the below is the least common denominator of someone who's, you know, dirt poor, you know, a low life, you know, a, you know, you know, worthless human being who doesn't know shit about anything. And, um, you know, and, and that's what they drink, you know, kind of, but if you look, um, there are some bad ones that are out there that are made. Um, I haven't tried them, and I don't expect to try them because that's not what I, you know, sample. We don't get them here, thankfully. But we do, unfortunately, have some some other stuff that these companies do make that they think it's a good idea. It's not. I've tried the St. Ides uh, fruit flavor beverage. It's sold in Mississippi, and then I just took a sip. I'm like, no. Um, same with Steel Reserve. They've tried to do a, a flavored thing. I think they were flavored drinks, um, iced tea or something, or fruit punch, which was on the same line as, um, which was on the same, same style as their fruit flavor. It's their fruit flavored drink, and I thought that was uh trying to compete with Budweiser and I thought that was just completely just ugh. <sighs> anyhow um but the breweries like this you know since you know it was like I said um Mackenzie River Corporation owned it then went into the ownership of what you call it uh um Paps and just like with uh, Anheuser Bush with their three two beers King Cobra and Hurricane the six percent and the eight percent and uh Going back to Paps with Cold 45 and the Cold 45 Double Blast and the um, High Gravity. Um, 
and uh, Miller with OE, High Gravity, Ice House Edge, which is a High Gravity, and um, OE, High Gravity, o, uh, Ice House Edge, um, regular OE, Nikki's Steel Reserve, which is both, they do a 6% and 8%. Um, you know, this isn't something that I, I um, they, they, they put out some good stuff. They don't put trash out. That's not their thing. It's not what they do. It's not what they, you know, use good quality ingredients. And the cost is pretty efficient, pretty affordable. And I think within the last couple of years, I've started to have a good appreciation for these styles of beers. Again, it's not an everyday beer to have, folks. Also, ice is some, ice these SOBs, man. Do not drink them at room temperature. Do not drink them at 40 degrees. They have to be ice cold. I've had this in the freezer. I had this in the freezer last night before I went to bed. Um, and um, I had it for about a good hour or so. Took it out. And... Um, And uh, and uh, it was uh, really something. I'm sorry, I'm, so, I'm watching this football game right now. This bowl game. I'm um, kind of keeping my attention, but I apologize, to everybody. Um, this is um, this is um, you, you can't drink this at at, at room temperature again. But anyhow, um, 8.2%, I think it's quite good. Um, it's not great. Um, I think I still will lean more towards the hurricane. <clears throat> High gravity. I think they probably quality quality on that beer, particularly from Anheuser Bush, and they do InBev, and their quality control is as by far second to none than anything that, that the, the other breweries put out. Um, you know, as is everybody, the, the big guys, you know, quality control, quality, cleanliness is, is superb. And then again, they do not use garbage stuff to put, you know, this, these beers together. Um, so um, as much people want to diss the micro lagers and these beers tend to win the awards. I'm not sure what award this is won at a beer festival or not, or or beer, Great American Beer Cup or the uh, Wor World Beer Cup or the Great American Beer Festival. I'm not sure, but... I'm sure it's probably something that I would, you know, would put my money on that um, is top notch. So, um, again, like I said, Hurricane probably will put this up there, number one, OE, high gravity, number two, Steel. Um, yeah, I would rank these as, you know, as... Um, it's probably of, of, of the better high gravity models. Ice House Edge as well. So, um, so, but anyhow, no dissing the same eyes. I think it's, this high gravity is quite excellent. I'm going to give this beer uh, for the style. I'm going to give it a nine. Um, I'll be nice. I'll give it a nine, eight and a half. I'll give it eight and a half for for the style. I think it's quite good. Not great. We high gravity is probably more up top there for me. And speaking of which, I'll probably get some with that. Um, about to go over to someone's house. We're going to watch some games. we got the rest of the evening to watch some football games. And I'll probably be sipping on that tonight. My my budget is kind of a little tight right now. So i got to be careful with what I'm spending. So, um, you know, Bush and, uh, and uh, this is probably something that I would, uh, you know, go with. So... Um, Bush, uh, Bush Light or Bush, whatever. I'm not buying the Kirkland's Kirkland Signature Light. Yeah, it's I'll give it to somebody. I've had it before, and I'm like, you know, uh, Kirkland's Light Grade is kind of like uh, right there. It's not going there, but it's like right there. If you've ever had it, but anyhow, um, my beer budget is stuck to malts and high gravity stuff right now, Mickey's and, you know, which are, are 
uh, Milwaukee's uh, best, probably. But anyhow, enough rambling. I'm talking too much. Uh, eight and a half for me for this beer here. So it's uh, quite good. So anyhow, Sean Pierre, the beer TV room. So you can keep watching as always. Cheers.